and on here. Hi, uh, this Zoom is being recorded right now. I've got another sub two student, Brian, on here. And he had a few questions after watching uh, my tutorial videos, uh, my other ones showing how to bid on auction properties that are online. And I was sharing that today or this coming week, I have one that I reviewed uh, or I found based on the research I did. I had my uh, boots on the ground or my contractor out in Southern Indiana. Okay, my headphone wire just came off. So can you hear me again? Yeah, I can still hear you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm connected to the desktop and the Bluetooth didn't work. This is how funny it is. But, you know, hey, growing pains. So I found this property. It. Um, another thing I want to mention is, again, when the way it works with these online auction, and today we're on auction.com. You should see it on my screen. Uh, I guess I might enlarge this. There's no point in Okay, you can still see my screen, right, Brian? Yeah, I can still see it. Okay, so auction.com, um, I am in escrow on one property. Um, they use a law firm out there for escrow, and things just flow out of my mouth, okay? So whatever you don't understand, you let me know. But uh, I am in escrow with one property through auction.com. They made me deposit $1,000, so literally, they are they do have uh, $1,000 on hold for me for another property I'm in escrow and they said that they would refund that to me after I close escrow instead of allowing me to use that 1000 towards my closing costs okay so um, I looked at this property it's in Mount Vernon Indiana it's southern Indiana my contractor who's also another sub two student and who is my midterm rental property manager, he went out to look at this property. Okay, so this is where it's great. Um, I, I'm scrolling down because it says occupied and it's not occupied, right? He went there, they moved out, it's, there's no furniture, although he couldn't get into the property. Okay, so he, uh, but he did take pictures. I had him knock on the neighbor's door to get information. Um, on the property and they said they saw people leaving in and out but so it's not occupied okay it's completely vacant and it is the bank's property now and so here it is is where the property preservation company has not gone out to the home yet so this happens all the time there's so many foreclosures sometimes the property preservation is the company that the bank hires nationwide and whoever they have as a vendor in that area comes out to check on the property. OK, when they come out, I don't know. And this also happens for me. The way they know or how things get moving along is, you know, you got the court dates, you got the trustee sales when nobody buys it, it goes back to the bank. So I know a lot of students are working on pre foreclosures and stuff like that. And even on these websites, you can do pre foreclosures. OK, you can do it as a short sale or but pre foreclosures means you have to go to the courthouse. I don't, I don't mess around with that. I don't bother with going to the courthouse. I just look at these. Uh, do you remember the title pro, which is how do you check up property details, Brian? You remember I showed you how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Let me open it. Okay. Um, here it is. I'm going to pull it up. Well, okay. Let me do it again. I'm going to show again. I want to walk it through because it doesn't hurt to, for you to hear it over and over again. Okay. Uh, 742. Uh, let me see. You can either put in the city or the county that the property is in. 
I forgot what the heck county it's in. I got a faster computer with the CPU and it better have more memory here. Okay. So got a corner lot that's across from a high school. The reason I'm proceeding with this property is because uh, Jason, who's my property manager, and he lives in this neighborhood, this city, said that people out there don't even do short-term rentals. They don't even use Zillow. You know, they don't even know anything about midterm rentals. And there's so many sports things that goes on, and people need a place to stay. So this is a property, two bad property. He said it was clean. Um, he couldn't get in. But based on previous photos, I looked at it, and it was, looks good. Time, my dogs, my husband. Okay. So the current bank that took it back is U.S. Bank National. Okay. How you look at this is what I do is I scroll back. I know that um, the last person that bought this property got a loan for 142373 and that is probably 3.5% down payment of whatever the purchase price is, okay? So the FHA, they got an FHA loan, right? I'm going to scroll down here. This is what is important when you look at this. On August 8th, 2024, the sheriff's deed. That literally means now there's no, I believe, I recall, no more redemption period. Do you understand what a sheriff's deed is or means, Brian? I'm not 100% sure, but based off what you're saying, I kind of get the gist of it. You want it to show sheriff's deed. Okay, okay. this tells you yeah. that good to go. Because if you notice, in January 29th of 2024, there was a notice of sale. Yeah, okay. That's just the notice. So the deed actually means it got foreclosed and it went to back to the bank. So it takes some time. So, because uh, I used to do this all the time, notice of trustee sales, if a bank, because, you know, there's, there's rules that the bank has to follow in order to foreclose. Same thing if you guys are doing creative, right? And you do a wrap and somebody doesn't pay you. Then you got to go through the process of filing uh, eviction, then foreclosure. There's a 90 day before you can file a notice of default. Then after the 90 days, there's another 20, a minimum of 21 days to file the notice of trustee sale. And then the actual foreclosure. Just because someone files a notice trustee sale does not mean the house has been foreclosed on, right? So that window of time to when they actually foreclose can be a minimum of 21 days or six months, one year, two years, whatever. You just have to file it. So everything has to do with the recording, right, at the county. Yeah. So this sheriff's deed means it's been foreclosed on. Now we can proceed. It went back to the bank. Nobody... Nobody at the auction courthouse bought it. And the reason I don't play with the auction house is because you have to come there with cashier's check. And back in the day, people, you know, these investors would come with literally different uh, increments of cashier's check to buy the property. It has to be exact, too. Okay. So anyway, that's just a little bit information. So this number here, 12704. 550 I know is the number I need to work with for the bank to let go of this property. Okay? Does that make sense? This yeah. We bought it for 143 but this is what I know what the bank wants to let go. Here, the bank, I never trust this resale value of 188000 You have to do your due, due diligence. And Jason's sister happens to be a realtor, so I had her pull comps. But before I even have her pull, I go to Zillow, I go to Redfin, I pull up everything I can find on this property of what I think the, the value is, right? So if you pull up Zillow, Zillow will always pull the current listing or sale, and they're the only ones who pull these auction 
if that makes any sense. So if you're a buyer and you're not searching through Zillow to buy houses and you're uh, using a realtor, well, the realtor goes on to the MLS to look for homes. This home doesn't show up on the MLS. Got it? Because I chose the one that is a, well, no, this one has no agent and it's called a second chance uh prop second chance um whatever foreclosure and i the reason i checked that is because there's no buyer's premium it's not applicable there's no agents on this property they don't offer commission and it says cash only but i'm going to buy this with a hard money lender hard money loan okay and this also says occupied uh, so if you go in if you look at the photos they did originally have someone come out there, take photos. At the time there was a car, so they said it was occupied. But since then it's been vacant. And in my notifications here, because I favorite this property, it gave me an inspection report. So if you click on it, um, you scroll down here, there was the initial property information report and they just went back here and um, I'm gonna click on it. This guy still thinks there's somebody in here and they went and took photos on 828. My guy came out like last week and um, he said, there's nothing in there, you know? So we know, so it, it, it gives me, uh, so now I have to deal with evictions. You see, I, I don't wanna buy these properties with people in it. I, I, I try to avoid that, um, but you can always offer them cash for keys. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of like tempt them to get out of there and then you can make a bid. I haven't gone that route. I just buy properties that have nobody in it. Okay. So that's my, but since I am a listing agent for uh, these bank, banks and I do it here, once it gets foreclosed, they also ask me, go make contact with the occupant then they tell me what they're willing to pay these guys and then I, I, I present it to that uh, occupant and I'll say, hey, the bank's offering you 12,000, you, you want it? If you do, you gotta get out of here in two weeks. Uh, but you know, hey, that's the bank giving me the money. But when I'm the investor trying to buy this, I'm not gonna give them that much money. You know, I'll start with like, I'll give you a thousand dollars to go. So I haven't had to do that, but it's an option. I just don't want to deal with it. Um, okay. So back to this. So the the option started wait, today at 5 a.m. Okay. I, I had saved it. And then I went and I did a proxy bid because they started at $35,000. I just bid because then I wanted a reminder. Um, but I'm going to say this. I can share this with you, Brian, but I have shared this on my uh, the link. What I ended up doing was I created a spreadsheet at the bottom. At first, I had this all one page. It's starting to get so big that I had to separate it by states. OK, so I can share this with you guys. So these are all the information that I think is pertinent to this property. OK, because you will not remember just by saving it on that platform doesn't help so the property here is where is it okay is this one highlighted in green and tell me when you don't see anything okay brian so i have the platform the the date i first saw it because they won't tell you when you saw it so i why do i say this because i bought another property in alabama where is it in birmingham i bought this one i saw it in March and someone actually bid it, it bid for it. It went away and then it came back. And so I'm like, Oh, and I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't in that market yet. So I didn't do anything. And then when it became available again, I, I jumped for it. So it's now September. That means it was literally six months ago when I first saw it. Okay. So that's why it's important to put the first time you saw it, the property on the website. Um, Okay, let me go back here. You know, and I'll, I'll always put what date the auction starts and ends. Um, you know, I put the starting bid because 
it was it started at uh, 35,000. I know the reserve is 127,050 because I pulled it off of the property detail report. I'm being conservative and I'm going to say 180. Although my realtor and my boots on the ground are saying, you know, 188, 190. So if you take that amount as the ARV, and this is what I always figure out, I just multiplied 70%. And I'm at 131,600. Okay. So that, and the bank wants 127. So it's still good. I can buy this and I still have 30% equity, right? Yeah. Like so is that, that your max? That's your max that you're using? 70, 75% or 70%? Yeah, 70 because I want to be in 60. I really oh, would okay. like to be 60, you know, but yeah. again, it all works to you because I'm including my down payment, I'm including mm -hmm. my rehab. Closing costs will be about, you know, you can always use two and a half, but I just found out something I didn't know before. You can offer, you can ask for closing costs and they will pay you. So then I can cover my closing costs with the lender. And how I found this out was because <laughs> as a DSCR lender, remember most of them have a minimum of a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. There's a cap. So guess what happened? And I screwed up. I didn't screw up, but again, this is just learning. I'll highlight it right here. The reserve price was 99,840. I won that bid for this property at 99,840. And then when I took it to my DSAR lender, he goes, oh, you're under $100,000. So we're going to have to charge you more. And I asked him, could you make an exception on that? And they're like, no, they're very strict. And it was Kiavi, okay? So I ended up using Kiavi. This broker used Kiavi. And Kiavi allowed you to do 10% down payment. So then I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to the seller and I'm going to ask them, hey, I'd like to increase my purchase price by $2,000. And if you would credit me, and then my purchase price would be 100,000, but you know, it's funny. They literally increased me for 101, 840. Even though I was getting 2000 closing cost credit, the lender accepted it because it was based on what the purchase price was. Ah, I see. I was, I was trying to just be exactly at a hundred thousand plus, cause I didn't know they were going to do the 2000, take it away and say, well, no, you're still not, your loan amount is still not whatever. But the way DSCR, and I'm still learning because they did they do the loan to cost and then they factor in the rehab and all this. Like I, I will tell everybody I'm not the greatest math person, but <laughs> okay, because I don't get loan to cost, but then I told them and I have my scope of work that it's gonna cost twenty five thousand dollars. So to a DSCR lender, they factor back in the uh, rehab. But anyway, long story short, the seller I was surprised they were easy. They went ahead and go, okay. They redid, gave me a new addendum for a purchase price of 101,840. So now the the let the lender is accepting it, and I'm I'm above my $100,000. So make a note. You guys can ask for closing costs. And then I go, why the hell did I only ask for two? I should have asked for four because I'm just, I was ugh, I wasn't thinking. So anyways, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so I got closing costs, and it's like. I think I put this number in here. I can't remember if I put it in there or is it the number I found on um, my title? Okay, so anyways, let's go back here. Then what I also found out was one of the girl when I called in customer service told me that when you bid, I'm trying to think, okay, you see this word here, bid increment. So at first it was $35,000 starting bid. I bid that. And then I was outbid. Zone doesn't do this, but auction.com does. This is what they do. It's a seller counter bid. They will bid against you. Oh, and then you I can, see. You can go in here and look to see who did it. You're always bidding against the auctioneer. If you don't look at this, you, you didn't know. So remember I said at first our bid increment was 25,000. Now it went to 10. It'll go to 10. It'll go to five. It'll go to two, one. I think I've seen 500 and 100. And what does that mean? That means you're getting closer and closer to what the bank wants. 
but you already know what the bank wants, right? Because you did your research. I did, but at one point there there was there's been a few where I thought the bank won 188 and I didn't want to buy it. And I went back, someone bid, someone else bid, and they took it for 149. And I was like, what? You know, I missed out on that, but uh, it was in a great neighborhood, so I was yeah. okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was one deal, the first deal I bought. I don't know how the bank accepted sixty thousand when the FHA loan amount, the, the that previous owner bought it for one hundred forty-five thousand. There was no way I was supposed to get that at sixty, but I did. So that was just luck. And so sometimes, because the seller on this property is the one who took it back, they can't sell it for less because it's been HUD insured, and HUD wants that amount. And that's why I go after these FHA finance deals because it's hut and short, so you know that's what they want. Does that make sense? Mm. So it's if it's hut insured, they want their reserve amount no matter what. Yeah, they want the okay. insured amount. No, no, not the reserve. They want oh. the insured amount. And that insured amount is usually what the reserve amount is. Oh, okay. So it's a yes and a no at the same time. Okay? Yeah, I get you. So Okay, but then why it changes sometimes and they would go lower, I don't know because I did find out that I thought the reserve was 188 and that I didn't bid on that property and then somebody actually got it for 149. And so I just keep this information to understand how it works. And some, I, I've become friends with, on Zoom, one guy tries to help me and I just talk and I call and I ask them questions and just get to know, you know, and understand what's going on. Okay. So I'm not going to bid anymore. I'm going to wait. And I put a, um, I put a little reminder on my phone to get back, but it's going to be over by 5 a.m. on Thursday. I won't be there, but I'll probably do late tomorrow night. I'll bid again to be closer. So the way I think a lot of people, when they go in these auctions, they think, oh, I'm the highest. I'm going to win. No, you know, you, you won't. But it doesn't matter because all you have to do is your research to see what the home is worth after the repair. And then, you know, based on your research on what the HUD insurer or that reserve amount is, there's your spread. Okay. And then the next thing. I try to only bid for homes that were last sold no later than 2021 or earlier. You know why? Mm, why? Equity. Okay. You've had, and what did people, what happened in 2020 and 2021? What was the worldwide problem we had? Houses were too expensive. <laughs> But why, right? We had COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two things happened, right? We had COVID, and the next thing you know, people were out of their minds overbidding. I told my clients, do not go and be in this crazy bidding war. I told them they still wanted to do it, right? So 50000 boom, easy, over asked price, right? Yeah. So two things happened at that time. People were bidding like crazy, and then... And then what happened with COVID? People, we got the COVID forbearance, remember? Yeah. So what happened? Banks cannot foreclose. Homeowners just said, hey, I can't pay. No paperwork necessary. They didn't get foreclosed on, right? So what I'm noticing when I'm doing my research on these properties is that people bought it, let's say January, 2021, well, they didn't go foreclose then. They probably took a COVID forbearance and stopped paying for the mortgage, right? So now pretty much COVID forbearance has been lifted. So these people, instead of putting money aside to pay the mortgage, probably spent it. And then now they're trying to go do a loan mod. And now interest rates are 7%. They got it for 3%. They don't qualify. So now the banks are going through with their foreclosure process, right? So when I've been doing these research, I've seen people purchase their home and they've been foreclosed in 10 months, in 11 months. 
I cannot Jesus. believe how fast it's been going. Okay. So therefore I buy properties 2021, like December, 2021 and earlier. And a lot of times these properties were, were sold by an investor. They rehabbed the place and they sold it to the current well, they're no longer the current owner because they got foreclosed on, but they were the last owner. And these investors remodeled the home. So then I'll look at photos, and this is why I tell you to research. Just put the address in your browser, and it'll pop up Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, all those third-party links, right? And the way it works is if the home isn't listed on the MLS, then you'll get the last MLS listing and what it looks like inside. You get it? I'm, if yeah, you have a property yeah. on auction.com that is occupied right now, you don't know what the interior looks like, but then you go back in time and you look at the last listing and you see what it looks like. Now, the reason we want to do this is for you people who just started, don't have a connection for a realtor. Uh, out in that area because the realtor can still always pull the MLS for when it was last sold. But I'm doing my initial research right now and I'm just looking on the internet. I could do this all by myself. I don't need any help. Got it? So until a property gets listed in the MLS, uh, you will always get that last photo on the internet. Okay? And then um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And so uh, that's how I review what the heck does this house look like inside? Is it worth it for me to purchase or is it going to be a complete renovation? Because then if the house is vacant on this auction website, the guy will get in and take the photos inside. And what's even better is if you can get your boots on the ground to get out there and take a look at it first. So the house in Alabama I hired a realtor to go out there and he was too chicken to go inside. Like, I was like, hey, check all the doors, check all the windows, see if you can get in. And he was like, oh, there's a window, but something's blocked and he wouldn't get in. He wasn't in sub two. He basically ghosted me and went MIA. I told him I would pay him. I go, did you want to be a partner in this? And he was like, yeah. He was a referral from another agent. He just disappeared. So then I posted back on sub two. I said, who's in this area? And then Another sub two jumped on it. This is Birmingham, Alabama. He went out there in 30 minutes from the time I posted it on Facebook. He went in, he took pictures inside and I said, how'd you get in? He was like, the back door was open. I said, <laughs> well, I was like, great. You know, cause that's happened a few times when people are foreclosed on, they just leave and they don't care. Okay. So the one I bought in Alabama, the bank did not do anything. I cannot even believe it. They didn't even secure the property. Okay. There's people's personal items in there. The yard is, um, it hasn't been, the grass hasn't been cut. Remember I took this property I saw six months ago. So grass has grown. There's liens on it now, not liens, but code violations. And the city, um, is flagging it and saying, if you don't cut the grass, we're going to put a lien on it. And I did ask the bank or the seller if they would move the personal per, uh, property in the house. And then they said, no, and I'm like, okay, fine, fine. I get it. But then now there's a violation and I sent them the picture. I said, look, I don't own this property yet. You better pay the lien. So then the attorney office who's working on it is shooting it over to the asset manager to tell them to pay the lien. Okay. So anyway, you always have an option to ask and tell them, but they do say property is sold as is, right? That's why we're getting it at a tremendous discount. So my property uh, in Alabama, my boots on the ground, his wife is a realtor. She says, easy, 175. We're buying it for, uh, let's just call it even 100,000. It's gonna cost about $25,000 to do the work. So um, we're I'm flipping that one, right? So 175. 25 minus 100 I'm gonna you know let's shave off another 10 grand just whatever so I can still make 40 grand off of this and what I did oh, wow. was I, what I did was a 60 40 split because I'm coming in I found the property 
I found the lender, but then now I give it to my boots on the ground. You handle everything from contractors. I'm giving them a vested interest in this property so that they will not mess it up and they want to keep it as slim, you know, like make sure we get the contractors to, to do the work right and stuff like that. And we did, and we signed a joint venture, 60, 40. It seemed to work out. And so these small amount properties still have a very big, big, you know, return. And so if you did the math on my ROI, it's probably a big number, but you know what? I don't care. I don't even figure that out. I just know that after okay, he and I 40,000, my 60%, I can make 24 grand. And this is how I do it. I've, we've done one already flipped. So the hard part for me is I want to keep everything, but I can't because I need capital too, you know? And so you add flipping, you add me getting the credit cards and liquidating them. I had money to buy. Okay, so back to this property. I'm going to keep this. This is a four bedroom, two bath. I'm going to keep it as a midterm rental because honestly, when you keep things, obviously you don't have all that money in your pocket right there, but it'll be giving you infinite returns, right? So he told me Mount Vernon is just hot, hot, hot. What uh, I forgot what's going in there. There's something going in that city. They have a plastic company and all the workers or whatever have to have a place to stay, um, something like that. So there is a need, right? So I, I, I probably, until he gets in, this home was like the flooring is good and stuff like that. I may probably have to re, I have to put furniture in it, um, but you know, might cost me 10 grand. But then when I refinance and pull all my money back out, let me see if I can refinance and pull my money back out. I think I said I could. So this house in Mount Vernon, she said 188 is, oh, but you know what, this one, I have to buy it for 127. Okay. All right, 61,000. So let me figure out 188 times 70%. This is, this is close. And I think I found a private money lender for this, which is one of my past clients. I shared with him how to get the credit cards. He got 120,000. Oh, wow. He's, he's in it with me. I told him I'm, I'll be partners with him. But since I do more work than he does, if we keep it and we form an LLC as partners, I'm doing 60-40. I used to be nice and I said 50-50, but everybody I bring in has no clue what the hell to do. I don't think it's fair that. Yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> especially when I bring in the money. Yeah. I brought in the money in my other deals because everybody just wants to tag along. And I used to think money was kind of important, but I'm like, hell no, no more. I go, that's not fair to me. I do so much work. I put everything together mm -hmm. yep. and I still bring in the money. Now, if I didn't bring in the money, I would do 50, 50, yeah. <laughs> but I brought in money and, um, getting all these people, finding your team is, you know, is a trial and error. I lose money, but sometimes that's what it takes to, to figure out if that person works well with you or not. Okay. So I'm going to come back to this on Thursday. And then I'm going to see where it is. And I'll probably be the only person bidding. And let's say, so I'll, another trick is I'll bid at 120 and I'll leave it there. Or maybe 122. And if I am the last to win that bid, what the auctioneers will do is reach out and say, hey, we're really close. The seller wants a little bit higher. Are you willing to come up? Then I'll. I'll inch up a little bit. And then sometimes the auctioneer will, which I've seen in the HUDs, they fork out their commission just to get rid of the deal too. So I've seen them put in like 1,500 or 2,000, especially if you're off by 5,000 or off by what the reserve amount is. Hmm. I didn't know they, they did that, but they do. So because when I am a listing agent for one of these properties there's an agreement between the brokerage and the auctioneer that the brokerage must pay the auctioneer one percent if they were paying five percent 
Okay, so they have a contract. And so now Zone used to pay 5% commission. Now they pay like one and a half to the listing and they pay 1% to the selling agent because they caught on when you know the market was crazy. Nobody was paying any commissions and stuff like that. They started to do the same thing. But once we become a buyer's market, the commissions will probably be higher again. But of course, we just had this uproar with the NAR and selling agents having to get money from the buyer. I don't know where that's going to go, but I'm, I'm in constant, you know, communication with my brokerage about the bank owned properties. And I think that the banks are still continuing to pay a commission, but very little. That okay, This was just a side note to realtors out there, okay? but as a buyer, I don't pay any commission right now because there's no agents involved here. They don't pay anything. So the good thing with having an agent on a listing is because you can utilize them and they will let you in the house and then they would turn on all the utilities. Okay. Um, but um, what else? So um, I may be at 120. The auctioneer bid at 125 you can just not do anything because i don't want to go above 127 i've got my limit yeah, where i want to yeah. be and you're not going to lose this because guess what nobody else bid on this and if you don't win the bid next week it will come up again okay so every auction house has a weekly scheduled bidding so um auction.com goes from tuesdays to thursdays Zoom.com goes from Saturday to Tuesday every week over and over again. Okay. So that's, that's really what it comes down to how you bid. My other videos were showing you how to do the research and then the boots on the ground, go look at the property, must look at the property, <laughs> you know, um, I might save assets. You can do a preference. So I've lost on a few, but I kind of keep it here just to see because, like I said, it's reappeared before. Um, let me go here real quick. This one in Akron, Ohio, I lost the bidding, but I'm okay. There's just so many homes. After a while, I just can't keep up. Oh, see, someone bid. And how, how are you picking these markets? Like, are you kind of doing your research on them or just kind of I, in terms first, of, like, market, you know, value versus rent amounts? Yep, yep. And uh, red states, I want to be able to evict these people. It's a landlord-friendly state. Um, I ended up in Detroit, Michigan first because one of the occupants at my REO in Las Vegas she got twelve thousand dollars to cash for keys and then i was trying to say hey you want you want to buy a house you know i'll sell you a house because you got twelve thousand i don't know why she mentioned this she was just like oh i, I have some properties in detroit michigan i got eleven hundred eighteen hundred for it right i bought it from the land bank she bought it for like thirty five hundred she got lucky you know she spent like 10 or 15 grand and i was like are you kidding me detroit first of course i said detroit but then I was like, how much did you buy it for and what did you get for it? And then she goes, you know, I'm I'm from, I think she said she's from Cleveland, Ohio. She goes, oh, Cleveland, Ohio, I don't think home prices has gone up since I was a child. You know, and I'm like, I don't know how old she is, so maybe at least 20 years. So I started looking, and I'm like, there's $30,000 houses out here? What the heck? You know, and it, it just went, took me down a rabbit hole. You know, and then I was doing Section 8 at the time. I pulled up all the, I went to the HUD website to see what the income was. This is why Vegas doesn't work because you're still getting maybe 22, 2400 for Section 8. You can actually get some good Section 8, but the house costs $450,000, right? And so that's why everybody has here has to do yeah. creative. Yeah. So you have to do midterm rentals. That's saturated already. Yeah, you're illegally doing short-term rentals because you know most of them are HOAs. And if there was a guy that I watched a video, he did short-term rentals. He got fined by the city fifty-five thousand. And he tried to say, "Well, I'm not doing it anymore" and stuff like that. And I was like, "No, people are doing pad split." But in Vegas, just like residential assisted living, each city can only have so many beds in it, and that that just 
someone had mentioned that on one of our uh, sub two posts. And you have to be careful how many beds you can put in the house because it's the same rules that apply, I believe, with residential assisted living. That's why people go to Texas because I think they can have either 10 or 16 beds in a house. So there's all that stuff. And you just can't do it because there's so many HOAs. I deal with a lot of foreclosures that were HOA lien foreclosures. Okay, that's a whole nother topic. And then there's got investors who went and bought these HOA liens, rented it out to the tenants and never paid the first lien off. And that's how I get these REOs because the first lien found out and now there's no more eviction, uh, foreclosure moratorium. They just came in and foreclosed on these, uh, these investors that bought the HOA liens. That's another topic, okay? But I'm <laughs> just saying that's um, what's going on in Vegas. So anyways, so yes, so now I'm going to buy in these states. They're, they're still out there. These are affordable housing. And so, you know, I think by September 30th, HUD is going to give you the new increase housing amount. It went up 15% for 2024. I don't know how much money it's going to, uh, what's the percentage for the rent? It will increase again in 2025, but we'll know on September 30th. So now I'm buying a property for $60,000, $70,000, three bedroom, two bath. And I found that uh, Huntsville, Alabama, a four bedroom gives you $1,900 in rent, but the purchase price is around 200, too high for me. Indianapolis, 150,000, I think I could still get 1,700, right? So the property I bought in Warren, Michigan for $60,000, I got lucky because the housing section eight was paying 1300 but I went to the city of Pontiac and it's called the tenant based housing assistance. They paid $1,600. And then the tenant got $1,900 to cover for their rent. So I, I'm sorry, not rent utilities. So I rent this property out for 1600 tenant pay all utilities. My mortgage PITI is $1,089. I pay 10% for the property manager. Although I'm questioning it now and I'm trying to see if, you know, do I need one? The hardest part was to get the tenant in. Now I've got the connection to that, uh, the person, the case manager there. All I need to do is go, I mean, there's still work, so I want to be hands off. But as you can see, this one in Warren, Michigan, we cashed out. I bought other properties with it, and it's going to make me about $450 to $500 a month. Okay. No money out of my pocket. But it was a learning experience on that deal. I came in with three people. We split three. It was okay. I was learning because I didn't have the boots on the ground over there, right? Uh, we bought out one of our partners, so now it's just two of us. She, she's one of the sub two leaders out in Michigan, Detroit, right? But these are the numbers. They work. I, I, I don't get all my money now, but I can't expect immediate gratification. I have a five year timeline. I just need to buy a few more of these, right? And every year, if HUD increases the rent, you go back and you ask for an increase in rent, right? That's how people are making more money. Just ask for HUD to give you more money. And what I didn't know was if these people who live here lose their jobs, because every year they have to file the paperwork again. Okay. If this is, I, I heard how some people lose their housing. It's because they freaking didn't do the paperwork. They lost it. But if they do their paperwork and if they go and lost their jobs, housing pays 100%. You never have to go look for another tenant. But if you do private pay, if these people lose their jobs, they either hunker down or they'll leave. Then you got to go back in, remodel it, and then find another tenant. So that's why I said, you know, I still want to give them affordable housing, 
And the key is to vet the tenants right from the get-go, meaning my guy didn't do this, and I wish he did, but I mean, he didn't take the first tenant that came through, but I don't know if he even went to their house to see where they were living, to see how they were living. And I told him, encourage them if they want to buy this house or ask a Mother's Day, send them, send the mom a flower, because most of these are single mothers, right? Or ask her to send their uh, report cards so you can give them a $50 gift certificate. Be a great landlord so they want to take care of your home and stay five, ten years. That's what I'm trying to do. And I learned that from watching another uh, podcast from Dr. Joe, who's in Washington, D.C. You know, so he has people living there 15, 20 years. Wow. But he makes but he makes that house look so nice. Like it's a house that someone would go and buy and live like a house that he would live. It's always ready. Washington, D.C. is 5,000, 8,000 a month uh, housing. It's crazy because all, yeah, it's all the outside of Washington, D.C. So just uh, that's that's it. You got any other questions for me? No, no, I think I understand the gist of it for sure. Again, you find your team and where do you find them? This I know other people are going to listen to this that are not in our Pace More Receptive group, but I, I'm putting it out there and that was the benefit. I joined sub to, to network. And we have a, um, I want to say we turned around because Brian, I met you before I signed up to sub two. Did I not yep. have you, you, you tell your story. I wanted to jump on the bandwagon. I was trying to do rental arbitrage. Yeah. And then it, it, it didn't work out that way. So I had to pivot. I, I probably did six months worth of trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to do. I try to go after sub two deals here in, in Las Vegas. And, and I just like, I stopped doing it after I said, what, you want 60,000 for an entry fee? And, and, you know, I'm buying a house for 60,000. Yeah, I know. Made, I'm not going to deal with That's a seller. Crazy. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, it has its own headaches, but the reason I have, authority to speak on this is because why don't I do something that I know, which is I am a listing agent for these bank owned properties and like other agents, I used to just sell these houses, but now I'm like, you know, I need to own these houses. So, um, you know, I, it's five houses in now since I bought the first one and I'm very conservative, you know, the numbers are right there. Don't try to just get a deal because you get a deal. I do it all the time, but what I'm seeing on these auctions. So I do three auction platforms, HubZoo, Zone, and Auction.com. Uh, I haven't made a video on HubZoo yet, but I will. And then when I look at these property detail reports, I just discovered something the other day in Evansville, Indiana. They have their own auction website for properties. I discovered it the other day because I saw the name of it is at zeus.com. I'm like, what the heck is this? So I logged on. I'm like, oh my God, here's more houses. I haven't had a chance to go <laughs> over there to look at it yet. But each city has their own foreclosures. And it might be maybe for local banks or something, but that auction site was, it only had a few states on it. Okay. But um, I even have a list of properties through my own brokerage because. I work for Carrington uh, Holdings, and they are also a mortgage servicer. Okay, but I'm not allowed to buy those properties because that's a conflict of interest. So I don't buy those properties. Uh, and those go to agents and they must be listed. So I think if you're interested, you can also find, you know, there's government auctions. There's so many different auctions. You got the land bank, you got, and I think foreclosures are ticking up right now that's that's what it is i'm seeing a lot more and this spreadsheet of mine um is starting to get i i had it on one page but now it's getting too big you know? <laughs> um, see i i have a the i i so i posted this in um, the first video for zone.com in the bottom i linked it to my google docs you guys can pull this up so you don't have to, um, you know, go through me, but it, it just tells you 
and and I'll share this, Brian. I'm buying manufactured homes too because those can be Section really? Eight. Really? I just bought one for fifty seven hundred. Although my scope of work is oh. came back at nineteen thousand. I'm like, holy crap! And the space rent's three fifty. Section Eight will pay thirteen hundred dollars. Just do the math on that one. Okay, so uh, a sub two student brought me this manufactured home. Because we're back into affordable housing. What happens when people cannot pay their mortgage, even though have, they have a low rate, low interest rate? I always say that when you lose your job, who cares what rate you are? <laughs> you, you can't pay it for it. That's what I'm, I'm seeing right now. Yeah. So every day I listen to YouTube videos about our economy and what they're not telling you. All those numbers at the job markets, they tell you it's great, then they just revise it. So for the month of July, we lost almost 800,000 jobs. But in the month of July, they're like, hey, we, we got all these new jobs. Why? Do you see what I'm saying? So uh, I just heard big lots filed for bankruptcy yesterday. Um, you know, all these crazy things. And then I stay out of California. I stay out of Florida. I stay out of Texas. Like Pace was saying, insurance is too high. You know, these little houses that I'm buying here, um, even though the price is really low <clears throat> as an investor. So my Alabama, my property in Birmingham, Alabama, the annual insurance is still eleven eighty three, one thousand one hundred eighty three dollars. That's more than what I pay in Las Vegas for a bigger house that I spent more money on. But because, you know, I bought the house for one hundred thousand. I can afford it. Does that make sense, right? So yeah. you got to look at the insurance. You know, people are saying five, ten thousand dollars a year in Florida. That's why all these sellers are selling their houses. So, anyways, that's that's how I choose my markets. I think you asked me that, and uh, that's the reasoning. I'm I'm under a hundred, and of course, I want to get into multifamily. You know, uh, the the Newburgh one I bought, I bought it for two hundred forty thousand. Um, one bed, one bath, but I'm doing an MTR and it's 1700 per unit. Yeah. But I still have to fork out some money to rehab all of it so then I can go pull out, uh, do the refinance and get my money back out. But that one, I wasn't smart and I wasn't thinking. I got excited and I went and bought on the market. I had to put 20% down. That was 50 grand. I have a partner. Each unit cost me $16,000 to rehab. Okay. But again, it's going to bring 1700. So this one is a definite long-term one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm dealing with the first tenant in there who, you know, isn't paying the rent because she got confused that ownership transfer, but you know, they were paying $480. I increased it to 580 because I still want some rent. And the market rent is seven fifty, but the midterm rental will pay seventeen hundred dollars. Oh snap! But my mortgage is eighteen hundred, and right now I'm still getting like a seventeen plus uh, five eighty. Five eighty. I'm not including the rent, but the lady she hasn't paid me yet. Okay, I'm getting twenty eight sixty as it is right now with one remodel unit. So. It, I just always have to make sure that my uh, mortgage is paid no matter what, right? Yeah. So, but that, that, that's my strategy. I, I look, I'm looking to uh, retire in five years. I put it out there. Oh, that's awesome. 100000 yes. a month in income is what I'm, I'm – That's your I goal? Think, right now, I think that's low, but yeah, whatever, $100,000 a month in five years. And, that's that's but, good. But after you do one of these, you're going to scale so fast. I literally have to slow down because I need to hire a bookkeeper. I need to hire, um, you know, attorneys and stuff. I'm doing this all by myself too. But at some point, you know, you, you got to pay uh, someone else. And I, I need to hire the bookkeeper because I'm going out of my mind just keeping these spreadsheets updated. Uh, I can actually uh, send you a bookkeeper that, uh, that I know that, of. He actually that. does um... – the Bulkley brothers, he, he does uh, some freelancing for them. Okay. Does he own property himself? Uh, no, but he does He does all the Bulkley brothers uh, fix and flips and their buy and holds and stuff like that. Those, um, what is it? They're like a big real estate. No, I know who Bulkley yeah, brothers yeah, yeah, yeah. is. But, but the story is, 
I think when it comes down to it, you want to work with somebody who's doing the same thing as you. Just like I've, I've been listening to Anderson, um, you know, uh, Clint Coons, right? He's an investor himself. Then he's an attorney. Uh, I went, you know, I, I made a, a point with Mark Kohler and um, his partner is Pace, why is his name? Mark, uh, Mark Kohler and... I forgot his partner's name, but his partner is Pace's attorney. Oh, for the business really? side. What's That's his name? Awesome. I forgot right now. He, uh, he's on the Zoom calls and stuff like that on family night with Pace. And so I did a, um, I paid for a consulting fee with them, right? Because the tax attorney looks over your form, you know, that cost me like 1500 bucks. And then some of these bookkeepers who were uh, working with these guys were charging like $500 a month. And so my husband said, we're putting the, the the cart before the horse, or uh, yeah, cart. yeah, cart before the horse. I, I need to make money first before I go spend it. But me, yeah. I'm so I'm like analysis paralysis. I'm paying for all these people, and then I haven't even made the money yet, right? So that's, yeah. Um, I need to file 2023 taxes. I haven't done that yet. I I've know. Got, so do I. I'm nervous. <laughs> I've got my S corp. I've got my LLC. Yeah. Now I'm doing my living trust. I have. Uh, you know, YouTube University. I mean, I get all my information. That's from awesome. YouTube. That is awesome. Yeah. So, you know, my I've got headphones on all day long. I do not sit in silence because I'm constantly consuming information, right? And so if you haven't figured out how to do something, shame on you because everything is there on YouTube <laughs> for you to figure it out. But duplicatable I'm going to post this and so if you you know I had to do this I have to help people buy a house there is another non-student that I helped and he he did what I instructed him to do he's buying in Oklahoma City he didn't want to get in the same market as me but I was like telling him you should there's, there's more homes that are there so he's learning along the way and he's got me when he's you know needing some help and all that stuff like that but um, got to take action just got to do one and then once you get over that one, you'll be empowered to do more. So you'll scale very quickly after the first one. And um, yes, it's foreign. You know, it's still foreign to me as I do it because, every, and that's what real estate is. No transaction is like the last transaction, okay? And I'm gonna say that because I've been doing this for 20 something years and I still learn something new. I've got my title, my escrow, all those people. I make friends with all those title uh, people that I work with, right? And um, so anyways, and sometimes if you can get the last four loan number uh, digits, the loan number of the current servicer, that's the combo code to get in the house. That's a little trick I'm sharing with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember you told me that. You have to figure it out. And so lately I haven't gotten that number, so i just been, some of these doors might be open. Just hurry up and get out there and, and see if it's left unopened and you can go in. Because if you don't go in, a squatter will come in, okay? That's all I'm going to say, okay? If someone's going to say, oh, that's illegal, blah, 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 whatever, you're going <laughs> to buy the house, and uh, you're going to make it better for the neighbors, and the last thing a neighbor would want. And, and always go talk to the neighbors. That's all. Please, I have a video for uh, Cash for Keys, how to check, and I'm going to broaden it because this is what I do as an agent when a house gets foreclosed and I'm looking for you know, making contact, but safety, safety, safety first, right? So always go to the neighbors. You know, I never opened my door, but they'll be your contact person. And that's how we got another squatter out of a property that I had as I was communicating with a neighbor. She and I were talking and then my listing went live. Two guys went in squat because they saw it on the MLS. And then the HOA president, he called the cops and said it was a break in, got them out. Because I don't deal with evictions, I don't have time for that. And squatters know how to work the system. You got to take other action. Okay. And cops won't come unless it's a crime. Just remember that. You saw them break in the house. Yeah, they're trespassing. They're not. They're not squatters. They're trespassers. But if you said, "Hey, I see someone inside the house. It's vacant." Okay, go take it to court. Okay. So, anyways, hi, Ramble. So, hopefully, that's some information. Oh um, no, it's been great. Brian, what I'll do is 
Um, would you like access to that Title Pro 24-7? I would. I would. That would be awesome. Okay, so what I want to share with everyone here is that my brokerage, Villa, does title, escrow. Um, we're real estate agents. I, the senior vice president, I sent him the information with your contact. He will sign you up. We also have an app that can let you do a net sheet too, which is great. He has to sign you up. And all I ask you guys is that throw them a bone, open escrow title, but Villa Title also does REOs. So, um, oh, another thing is when you're opening, when you win a bid and you have to open escrow, ask them very carefully, do I have to pay for the seller's um, fees? Okay, sometimes they will tell you, if you decide to use your own escrow company, you will always pay for the seller's fees. So if you want to save some money, always use the seller's um, escrow and title company. Okay, you're welcome to go somewhere else, but like everything, they have it open um, already and they order it. Okay, but my company, Villa, also does uh, zone auctions and sometimes auction.com okay but by me offering up the title pro 24 7 if you can use them for that service i appreciate it because i am asking him to give you the service and most of the students in sub two are always looking for property profile and you don't get it you know what i mean i get it because i work for them so it is an awesome tool to use and when you do get it, you can put it, download it as an app, and you can get a net sheet right off your phone to send and figure out what the title and escrow fees are. You get what I'm saying when I say yeah. net sheet, right? Yeah, okay. that's nice. So they, they have that. So you'll have to reach out to me uh, if you would like to have access to that title pro. It's I, I, it's unlimited. I mean, I just search day and night. Oh, and I, I want to show so you guys something here. Um, uh, so what I do is every time I pull that title pro, okay, I have my states here. Oh, Missouri is another state. I just haven't gotten in there yet. Um, I have a folder. I save, I create a folder with the address and sometimes, uh, I'll, I'll save all the photos so because then I can do a share before and after photos, okay? Because if I am doing a flip and then my property becomes um, on the MLS, I'll lose that old photo of what it was the last time it was listed. Remember, I was telling you, if there is a new listing, all the old photos from the previous time is gone. So if you didn't save it, you won't have it. So it's nice to show before and after to show your journey to other people. And why do I do this journey thingy? Because I want more PMLs. You're you're always selling. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. That thing you saw me post is for me to try to get money to show you that I know what I'm doing and I'm, uh, I don't know the words reputable, but you know, because you'll go to family and friends and they don't trust you and all that. And you're like, look, this is what I did. And you put it on Facebook and then they go, oh, I want to get into that. Okay, I got $50,000 I can loan to you. You know, uh, mm. it's, sitting, it's sitting in my bank account. I just put it in a CD for six months. I made 3%. So I have a friend, client. She had $60,000. She goes, okay. Jenny, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to do it. And I go, okay, so how much did you get paid in your CD? She goes, 3% of 60 grand. She made $900. I'm giving her $6,000 to, to hold for 120 days. That is a 20% ROI for her versus her $900 that she did with the CD for 3%. So she has to trust me. And then I've already returned money. For a few people, you know, I borrowed another hundred twenty thousand. The DSCR lender backed out at the last minute because their attorney was acting stupid about a title issue. Even though I had title insurance, they made me change it back and forth. And then their answer to the end was, 
oh, you kept going back and forth. It's a red flag for us. I was like, well, you guys asked us to change this and change that, and we did it for you, and now you didn't. So I had to go find money outside. Uh, my friend gave me $120,000. I paid her a flat fee of $8,500 for 120 days. We closed in 59 days. I still paid her $8,500. But I'd rather have my friends make money than a hard money lender. And that's kind of how you have to talk to people. Yeah. So um, that's kind of what I do. And that's the reason you, you document all this because you need to find private money lenders. So, yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Any that last makes questions? makes sense. For me. <laughs> uh, I think you just got to go do it. That's it. Yeah. I, I, no, I do. I, I'm right now, I'm strategizing how, how to go about this how to go about this basically how to start because i mean i do have some private money lenders i can use like family and whatnot but they know me as someone who's you know been doing corporate rentals and mm -hmm. they've seen my progress on that and i don't really have a lot of experience I, I can definitely learn it and get into it and master it or try to master it or you know become you, you've got the midterm rental you probably have the software you can probably do it on your own and not have to pay someone so my guy oh, pays yeah is 12 percent, right but i yeah. i love him he's great i mean he, yeah the, the, the biggest money. thing here is is getting private money lenders to feel confident or my family members to feel confident and and jumping into this auction space and these foreclosures and all that good stuff like they you know I, yeah. what i have with them right you're gonna okay. jump in with me like a, like a credibility Yes, uh, I'm teaching you how to do this. And how do I know this? Because I'm an REO listing agent. You, This is mm. why we always use Pace as he's our partner. He's our credibility partner. Yeah, that's true. We follow him. Now you guys can use me as your credibility. This is what she's done. Now she's teaching other people. The only thing the difference is I'm not charging you money for a course. Okay, I get so yeah. annoyed after somebody does something, they charge a course. Okay, I guess all I'm doing is I'm teaching everybody so I can go to community camp next year. I mean, I'm laughing about <laughs> this because it keeps changing it every year. You must do something to help people. So, Alaska, here I come next year. Pace, this is why I'm doing this. Okay, to get in community camp. Uh, I want to network with more people. You know, uh, my husband yeah. is different he's like oh you know everything what do you? i go no you always can learn something every day you know i pick up something every day and something else but you know i gotta stay in my lane this is my niche right now just work this little lane that you know um and and don't lose money right everybody does not want to lose money and so far i say i don't lose money but i should say i don't want to i might make less money but i'll never lose money and that's because I've lost it before. So maybe I won't make 50 grand, I'll make 30 grand. But you gotta look, is it the glass half full or half empty is how you look at it, right? But time is very important as well. But you know, I, I, I talk to other people who say, damn, Jen, you made 30 grand and you bought it for a hundred. I make about 50 and I'm spent the house has to be 40, $400,000, 500,000 just for me to make that 30 to 50,000. I'm going really small. That's why anybody who's a numbers person, go ahead and do the ROI thing for me. You know what I mean? I make 30 grand and I bought the home for 120,000. Yeah. I net 33,000. I bought the house for 120. That's net. Right, so rehab was 125. My partner was a realtor. We I paid him like half a percent because he had to pay his broker. We sold the house for 180. We still paid two and a half percent, three percent commission. You know what I mean? And then we, I got my 5,500 dollars back for the repairs, and then net to him and me 33 thousand dollars. I would say that's a good day. Anyways, I'm going to get cut off, so I think we're good here, Brian. So I will, you know, feel free to uh, contact me when you have questions along the way. It's oh, man, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer. Finally, it took you like six months to reach out, but you're finally uh, here. I was, I was transitioning from, from service, so there's a lot of crazy stuff I had to get done.
yeah well i think um it's coming so i think it, you've got a good time coming in because there's going to be a whole lot more oh, and feel exciting. free you can go in the same market as me i can help you i've got the people in place you know indianapolis is another great place to go into so that's where i'm, I'm heading to as well oh that's awesome yeah i i definitely need to jump in i'm gonna be jumping into this very very soon with you hopefully so that I want to, I want to hog you up as much as I can before other people no start hitting you up. <laughs> uh, send me the recording. Okay. So then we okay, can help other people with it. All right. I will. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, clip some parts too, like uh, the, the beginning and stuff to kind of make it more seamless and stuff. Oh, please put Adam together. I know I suck. Yes. <laughs> I need a technical, uh, technical person. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll be easy for me. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All I'll right. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye-bye.